Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and today I'm going to be playing the best tier 6 medium in the game live for YouTube and without further ado let's find out exactly what it is at least in the last 30 days on the European server oh I'm hoping it's going to be a comet oh it's close the comet is in third place at least with regards to its raw win ratio behind the Rudy and the M4A1 FL10 but let's take a look at win ratio difference okay Cromwell's in fourth place and it is significantly behind the T3485 M and the Rudy which are very similar vehicles so considering just how popular the T3485 M I think considering that's not only popular but also very powerful I think we're gonna to have to pick the Soviet medium tank today. So the T3485M. This is the tank that Wargaming really give to everyone who starts playing, as far as I'm aware. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when you start playing World of Tanks, Wargaming allow you to skip tier five, jump up to tier six once you've completed the missions. And I think you get this as a rental. So considering how good the stats are on this vehicle, even though I believe you get this as a rental, that just shows just how outrageously good this tank is. Because all of those stats that you see will be dragged down by all of the new players going in and driving around in this thing as it is the, the rental. So the fact that it has got like second highest on win ratio difference, <laughs> given that all those new players are playing it, shows you it's even more powerful than the statistics even show. So this thing, it's just got everything really. 2000 damage per minute. A nice pokey gun with half decent pen, 144 up to 194. More alpha than most other high DPMs, tier 6 mediums like Cromwell, for example. Cromwell's packing 135. This vehicle's packing, is it 160? No, it's 180. That's because I think Wargaming back in the day just buffed this thing's alpha up from 160 to 180, but they didn't change the rate of fire. Wow! So it's really now almost better than the tier 7 medium tank, the T43, but it's at tier 6 and it also makes credits as well. It's the T3485M, an absolute powerhouse of world tanks. But when you get yourself into a tier 7 matchup, it doesn't matter how powerful the vehicle you might be playing is. Apparently it does, actually, because I don't get spotted by the T3485 as I'm making my way in, probably because I'm using a fancy crew on this tank. All right, first shot is a whiff. Uh, let's see if we can go after the Skoda T25. I hopefully don't have eyes too big right now as we're going after them. Oh, that's a lot of tanks. Is he using the derp gun? Oh, he is. That's interesting. Well, I'm going to have to try and destroy the tank that probably isn't derping me. But if he starts to load gold with that derp, that could actually be really brutal if he loads gold. But if it loads HE, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Oh, that was a bit of a misplay, wasn't it? Or a misplay even. Can I overmatch this guy? I tried to shoot up into the flaps of his tank. I think he's going to probably go after me here. Is this the tier 6 with the autoloader? It is. There's one shot. There's, well doesn't matter now. I'm going to heal my radio operator. Look at the minimap. That is situational awareness kicking in once again with the radio operator heal. I know it's a bit of a meme really with radio operators. Not a lot of people realize but this shrub actually does protect. Um, so yeah that's always fun. It looks like I might be spotted. Am I spotted or was that a blind fire? I think I am spotted there. Or maybe I didn't get spotted and they're just trying to blind fire. That new Burza, which is the uh, tier 6 uh, Polish tank destroyer doesn't really have very much doesn't really have very much view range and it looks like the super hellcat didn't see me there as well until I fired these two little shrubs they do definitely come in handy I'm gonna load an HE shell now which actually has 300 alpha I'm not sure if that doesn't pen or if that's just a min roll in theory that could be like a min roll isn't it wait a minute what's a quarter of 300 quarter of 300 is 75 300 minus 75 225 yes quick maths live for YouTube right so that actually probably was a min roll there. I'm hoping that the Super Hellcat comes around the corner again. I probably don't need to be exposing my whole tank up there. Why don't I just sit here instead? It's a much better position to just sit here, right? Burza won't see me, I don't think, but I will see them. Man, this tank is great, but this game is close. So I'm going to have to uh, gonna have my carry pants on here. So I'm thinking, do I need to go across to go after the, the KV-3 or should I just keep poking this location and hope that I'm going to try and find some spots. Okay, in this scenario the 88s got underneath their gun line, so I think I'm going to support the 88 instead. I think that'll be my best bet. Oh man, I keep looking at the, my microphone volume. Uh, I had a, a Zoom call earlier today, yes! And Zoom, for some reason, just changes my microphone volume massively. One time I remember I recorded an entire YouTube video and it was like, maxed out. That's the worst thing ever. Especially when you're recording long YouTube videos. Oh, is that an E25? That is. 
but hopefully he's got a weak point on top. Maybe he'll struggle getting my top of my tank. He doesn't, but I'm trying to pressure him as much as I can. There we go. And this is DPM. This is a fabulous gun. This is seven degrees of gun depression, and that is a very powerful tier seven tank destroyer that is now out of this game. So I'm going to lock that Burza down. He used his repair kit earlier. Unfortunately, I lose a lot of hit points for that, um, but at least they're out of the game. Wow, 2,500 damage. This is looking like a great round. But unfortunately, even though it's looking like a great round, this round is still looking like we have a few issues here. Oh, I don't think the Super Hellcat has proxy spotted me. Oh, I'm definitely spotted now, though. Oh, oh he's fired. He's fired. He's fired. I'm going to go after him. Oh, no, the RT hits me down for 100. They've got another RT as well. This is bad. The Super Hellcat can just sit there and chill and wait for the artillery to shoot me again. Is the Super Hellcat going to poke? He's thinking about poking. The 88's going to pummel, pummel him around the corner. I pen another HE shell, but the HE shell, again, low rolls, I think, for 257 out of 300. That was my last HE shell. I'm going to have to back off there. The artillery is going to get me. And, ah, what a shame. GG to the artillery on the enemy team. I, I guess I should have done the, uh, the live kill cam there, right? Not bad, though. That's a pretty good start. 3,400 combined, nearly. Probably lost a few too many hit points to the Burza and the Artillery there. You can't knock 3,400 combined for a tier 6 medium. This thing is an absolute beast of a tank. So unfortunately a defeat did 50% more than even some of the higher tier tanks on our team. And we sneaked in a high caliber, so a nice first class medal. And the best part of playing a premium tank is 58,000 credits profit. So that was just the T-3485M in a nutshell. Just everything about this tank is absolutely brutal. So tier 6 medium tanks. It's such a decent tier to play. The only downside of playing tier 6 is that quite often you do get stuck in those plus 3 matchups against tier 8. But I still feel like with tier 6 mediums that you've got enough penetration to be able to handle that. Tier 5 sometimes hit and miss really I feel with trying to deal with the vehicles that are tier 7 especially the heavies but tier 6 is especially if you do manage to flank your opponents I know that's a meme in itself I'll just flank right uh, end up doing pretty good even in bad matchups talk about badge matchups this is not one of them now we got some juicy tier 5s and some tier 6s okay so when I play this map there's so many different approaches I can have one is that if I'm playing a scouty kind of medium that I can make my way through the west, especially if they don't have many lights. They have four lights, so we're going to have to watch out for that. I'm seriously thinking about taking a durability device and going fighting it out in the town. Uh, there's two bishops on the enemy team, so I really don't want to get caught by those bishops. They've got an amazing gun arc. They can only fire like 500 meters, which is pretty much, you know, halfway between... The maximum spotting distance of 445 and the render distance of 568 here. So about there is how far a bishop can fire. So they have to be pretty close to you. It's not like they can be pounding those rounds in from all the way across the map. But still, bishops can just fire over buildings. And so the last thing that you want to do is to be caught by a bishop. One thing I just thought to myself is considering how good the HE rounds are in this vehicle, I think I should take a few more HE rounds. I think probably taking like a couple more HE rounds instead of maybe a couple of AP rounds could actually be really good on the T3485M. Already looking for ways that I can try and improve this build. This tank, I don't usually play it very often. In fact, I'm probably going to play the T3485M more today than I have done in years of having this tank. Um, that's not because it's not a good vehicle. It definitely is a good vehicle. Uh, the reason why that is, is because... It just feels like it's one of those crazy OP tanks that I do feel like I'm legitimately seal clubbing in a vehicle like this. Oof. Really? Are they really just going to keep driving around the corner for me right now? Oh my lord, tier 6. I have not played enough low tiers recently. I've been playing quite a lot of high tier worlds of tanks. All of, all of the, oh, he broke my gun though. That was impressive. Oh! That was evil. Ah, well, that Mitsu definitely saying like, hey, just because I'm low tier doesn't mean that you can disrespect me, QP. Right through the gun there. Rough for me. Okay, hopefully I can should be able to fight him through. Uh, see what I mean about the bishop? They're literally shooting me over there in the top of the tank. Oh my goodness gracious. You think you're safe? You think you're safe? And literally they're shooting you over walls. It's ridiculous. That's 200 damage from that bishop. I guess it landed right on the top of the vehicle from there. Hmm. Well, that's my game. Not quite ruined, but more or less ruined. Oh. 
At least I've got the awareness today. Sometimes in World of Tanks I can go into situations and I don't know what the bad things that are going to happen to me. But at least I know what bad things are going to happen to me here. Man, that Mitsu high rolling as well for 330. That's brutal. Can I get this Matilda? Yes, I can. Are they just going to sit there? Really? 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 Of course, the bishop's having fun. Really? Oh God, low tier world of tanks. Never change. Bishop's going to hit me one more time, I think. There's a special place in World of Tanks hell for people who play bishops, let me tell you. Let me tell you. That's probably one of the reasons that I don't even enjoy playing tier 5 and tier 6 so much. Bishop, Lefe, FV304. Oh my word, does anyone else get as triggered as I do? I think if there's one kind of type of tank that triggers me more than any vehicle inside World of Tanks, it's Bishop, S, FV304, and Lefe. I think the Bishop and the FV-304 are actually worse than the Lefe because of the gun arc that they have. But you can see that the Bishops actually have to get close to you. Well, let's see if I can go and get close to that Bishop, if you know what I mean. And I don't need to get close to them for very long to be able to shut them down. At least that's the hope. Still got to be a little bit careful here. The A-43 is above, coming after us. Wow, the shell velocity on this tank is actually pretty good as well. It's really good, actually. 950 for Tier 6 is decent. Got to watch out, that bishop could be aiming at me around the corner, so could the S35, or SU85, sorry. Amarak, and out of there. Come on, let's go say hi to this bishop. <laughs> I can smell him. It smells like holy water, and uh, I was nearly going to say something quite edgy there, but no. Family friendly, I'm not on Twitch, I'm on YouTube today, I'm not playing on Twitch. Quacky perhaps you can't make jokes about bishops. You have to be good. Good on YouTube. Good! Good old Uncle Scrubby Babs. Man, what is up with these combines? This is why this tank just absolutely slaps. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. What an absolute monster round once again for the T3485M. And that was with losing a load of hit points early on in the battle. This thing just prints it, doesn't it? It just absolutely prints it. It definitely feels more like it's a tier seven tank down at tier six. And so, while that matchup that we just played, it wasn't exactly an incredible matchup. The result is the result is great. I wonder if they're if those bishop players play the bishop a lot. Should we see if those players play the bishop a lot? Do they play the bishop a lot? Usually bishop players play the bishop a lot. Actually, not too bad. He's more of an ELC main. What about the other one? Is there another bishop? There was another one right here, right? What about this bishop? Does this bishop play the bishop a lot? Two thousand games in the bishop and ten thousand in the Matilda. <sighs> There are some, there are some gamers out there. The Seal Club. I can, I can pretend to be the Seal Club police around players like that, right? Although to be fair, he wasn't playing in his Matilda. Can you imagine how devastated that player would be when they nerfed the Matilda like they did a couple patches ago? Man, I can't imagine having ten thousand games in a tank and then the vehicle being nerfed. I'm never really like that inside video games, where I like go towards a meta or go towards. Something that's just outrageously OP. <laughs> At least that doesn't last for too long. Man, these matchups, they're just coming in thick and fast right now. I'm loving this. This tank, I can see why people play it. I see why it's the most played tier 6 medium. And I can see why it's also getting the best stats, pretty much, of all of the tier 6 mediums. And I think it will have the best stats when we take into account what I said about the fact that it's given out as a rental to new players. If it's given out as a rental, they're going to have some horrible stats dragging this tank down. It's a lot like that on um, tier 10 vehicles that are available inside the bond store. Tier 10 vehicles that are available inside the bond store uh, usually have really bad stats as well because a lot of players just uh, play them that don't usually play high tiers but they bought them inside the store and they want to just go and mess around at tier 10. It's probably one of the reasons why the FE215B for example has such a horrendous win ratio at tier 10. Don't get me wrong, it's a bad tank. Although now that the Super Conqueror has been nerfed just a little bit, there's a little bit more reason to play the FE215B183, right? But uh, no, I think that's uh, that's uh, that's definitely stretching it. But um, the FE215B, I don't think it's as bad as the stats suggest. I just think that 
a lot of casual players play it who um, probably don't play tier 10 very frequently. Okay, so, so far so good for the T3485M. I'll take 3,000 combined in a tier 6 medium. I'll take 3,000 combined in a tier 8 or a tier 9 medium if I can get my hands on it. Uh, but to have it down at tier 6 is just outrageous. Okay, I'm going to get forwards. I'm going to use this lovely rock location here. There's no way the Hetzer will see me. Uh, and this Hetzer is going to be in a lot of trouble very soon. I don't really want to get spotted though right now. So I'm still going to be a little bit sneaky. There's the first shell. This feels wrong. I'm like, I've got, this is effectively like a tier 7 gun shooting a tier 4 tank. What is this? 2012 World of Tanks? Oh, 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 oh. This could be bad. That was a really awful shot. But come on, armor, you can hold on. We've got a Matilda shooting us from down below, so I'm going to just angle my towards my Matilda just a touch. Put a shot into the pins ends, lose one shot to him, but I should be able to finish him off before he reloads. Good. Nice. What's this? Now a Cromwell that I'm going to have to deal with. Oh, that was a really bad shot. Okay, got to make sure I get rid of the T-3485. Good, he's down. Uh, let's get the uh, Type T-34 now. Oh, I knocked out his engine. He can't move. Matilda's shooting me somehow. I guess I've got to reverse a little bit more. Angle like that. Watch the Cromwell coming around the corner. See if I can finish this guy off. Don't want to expose myself to the Matilda. Okay, he's down. Try and maybe get this Cromwell out now while not still not exposing myself to the Matilda. Okay, there's an M6 coming around the corner as well, but i got to get rid of this. i got to get this M6 out first. Okay, there's another shot. Oh, my word. Send in the uh, paid actors right now. This M6 is a terrifying tank, though. Just got to keep my angled armor up here, though. Got to turn in again. He's using the little 76 millimeter, so maybe I can bait him with my outside armor. Maybe I can bait him on my upper hull here. There we go. Bait him on the upper hull. Just one more shot. Maybe I can overmatch. Yes. Good. All right. We lost some hit points. What is this? 2,700 damage in three minutes? What are we doing right now? But at least we're still in it to win it. There's a Matilda now advancing towards us. What's that? A T14 on my right? Got to watch out for him. Uh, I should be okay. Let's keep going after this Matilda. One more shot should finish off that tier four. Did I just get six kills in three minutes? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what is happening today? I'm going to go after this T14. We're going to risk it. Let's see if we can get a Radley Walters medal live for the YouTubes. YouTubes! Okay, this is scary, though. T14 is a terrifying tank. It's premium. It's tier five. It's got half decent everything. And I just shot a British flag. But he's got a dead loader now, so maybe he's a donkey. What is this matchmaking I'm having here? He's looking behind him for some friends. He doesn't have a loader. I'm just going to try and rush and get the side over here. Let's turn. Don't want to lose more hit points, but also want the kill. Nice. Seven kills. <laughs> what is this game? Oh my lord. Today is my day, apparently, for the matchmaker. Oh, I'm obviously just fired up. I am still okay with the way that I played that. And I don't think I've fired many, if any, gold rounds. So... Is that what you're meant to do? Give yourself a pat on the back? I need to have, like, a free-to-play bard behind me who's like, Yes, brave Sir Quacky didn't fire the gold today. Brilliant, yes, well done. Well done, brave Sir Quacky. No gold rounds for you today. I've got to watch out for the Semavente, though. Oh, come on, let's go in. Let's hunt. Let's see if we can get a Radley Walters medal live for the YouTubes. YouTubes! This Valentine AT has got a derp gun, though. I've got to watch out for him. Oh, I could probably fight HE into the back of his tank. There's the Semavente up there. I've got to watch out for that. I'm going to go for an HE into the back of there. That should secure me. Got a Radley. Okay. Radley secured. What about a Pools? What about a Pools medal? Can you get Pools for shooting tier 4 tanks? I think you can. I think you can get Pools medal at, uh, at tier 6. I'm not going to tell him, like, please, go AFK, Cromwell, let me get pools. No, I'm quite happy with a Radley, a random Radley on a Wednesday, a Wednesday afternoon. Random Radley. These games are so fast. I'm thinking, like, okay, I've played three games. Is this live YouTube video out now? Probably. I'll probably play one more and disappoint myself massively. A lot of people are out there, like, why is QB getting CC matchmaking? CC matchmaking. Maybe I can put an HE shell up his backside? I can. Now an AP shell and a ram, maybe? Oh, did I just get nine kills and 4,700 damage without firing more than maybe a couple of gold rounds? <laughs> Why is this tank so good? That might be one of my highest experience games of the year. I don't know how much it's going to be. I think it's going to be quite a lot of XP. Um... 
What is that? Is that a double? Clean. Clean, ladies and gents, boys and girls. 2,000 base experience. I was the team. I, I think I got as much damage as the rest of my team combined. Um, I literally got... What is that? Five times? Six times anyone else's damage? Uh, I was firing on reload. We made 81,000 credits profit. What more is there to say about the T3485M? Uh, clean game, 2,000 base XP. What a monstrous round for this tank. And I'm sitting here now wondering why have I only played 34 games in this vehicle in history? That was my the highest experience and the highest damage I've dealt and the top kills that I've ever got in this vehicle. Thumbs up. Okay, now that I've had a huge game, let's just play one more and thoroughly disappoint my YouTube audience. Come on, I've got standards, okay? I'm meant to be terrible. Everyone knows I'm terrible at World of Tanks. Okay, here we go. Tier 8 game. Finally, some worthy challenges, right? Or at least an opportunity to just have a horrendous round. Man, that last game, you just saw everything about this tank. 90 millimeters of frontal turret armor, 75 millimeters of frontal hull armor. That's the biggest difference on this tank, is that it has kind of like the hull armor of a tier 7. So if you angle it like this, you ricochet most of the, the shells off the front. And more importantly, pretty good accuracy. Okay, gun handling. But really good damage per minute. This thing's 2,076 DPM combined with the gun rammer and the vents. Just, that's what made that last fight. And that's where tanks are OP. It's as simple as that. This tank should not have the rate of fire it has. It should not have the alpha it has. It should have maybe the same rate of fire, but with 150 alpha or 160 alpha instead. This thing just absolutely claps its opponents. And then the HE shells as well, like 44 millimeters, 300. I should definitely take a couple more. Uh, again, I've made a bit of a mistake here. I don't, it doesn't look like I can actually pen him reliably. Well, how does that one miss? I thought that was a hit. I want to keep going here. Get my way forwards. So when I'm playing on Live Oaks, what I like to do is to try and push the south. But we've got to be a little careful because there's like a Borask on the enemy team and two T20s. So it's quite likely that the Borask and the two T20s will push this flank with the EBR Hotchkiss. In fact, I, I'm going to tell this guy to fall back. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. That's all there is to say. It's not going to happen. Uh, I'm going to tell this Hummel to fall back as well. Okay. I'm going to take my time. Because I think that my Shkoda T56 will and my Kilana will win the other flank. I'm going to tell this guy to fall back. All right, this is quite a hard shot to make happen, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to try and knock this tree down and then hopefully use the extra camo to avoid my opponents. Now, when you've got a very small shell, it's quite hard to do this. Okay, I need to go a little bit closer, like a couple pixels closer. I've only got two shells, though. Maybe here? That's the problem. When you've got a very small caliber gun... Uh, the splash is very small, and when the splash is small, and you're shooting at a target that's fairly far, fairly far away, um, you you don't have much margin for error. Error. So, funnily enough, back in the day, all high explosive shells used to splash in World of Tanks, right? Then Wargaming decided that they wanted to make high explosive shells not splash, but. Interestingly enough, they still splash when it comes to knocking down buildings and trees. So you do have a splash radius. You can find it out when you mouse over, as you see. Uh, so the splash radius on this is 1.32 meters. And so what you have to do when you knock a tree is you have to actually imagine that you're creating your... So for example, if I want to knock this tree this way, I shoot the HE shell just over there. And if I want to knock the tree this way, I shoot the HE shell just over there to splash it away. And that's how you can knock down trees from outside the map. The problem is, is when... I think he might be tracked again. The problem is, is that when you have a very small caliber gun, that the margin for error is much smaller. And so you can't splash trees as easily. If I have a big old meaty gun, like 120, I might have two meter splash radius. And so that margin for error is significantly larger, and so I can more accurately knock trees. And unfortunately, you can only knock trees once. So, um, rip. Okay, there's a good shot. Bush mechanics. 
I'm doing it all today, boys and girls. This is... I'm on form. I'm on form today. This is a, a just a QB masterclass, really. Oh, not really. Not really. I'm just playing tier 6 mediums. I, I can celebrate that I'm playing okay at least for once, right? But um, we did well in the good matchups, and now we're doing well in the bad matchups. We're putting ourselves in defensive positions. We're not getting caught. We're holding back the enemy team. This is just classic World of Tanks. Good stuff. Dutch Hunter finishes off the M6. I'm not sure if Mako on the enemy team was Dutch. It's always funny when I see people called like Dutch Hunter or like Swedish Hunter. I'm like, are you someone who hunts Dutch or are you a Dutch who hunts? Big difference, right? Big difference. Oh no, I've, I've officially ruined the YouTube comments now. That's it. It's going to be a, a whole Scandinavian war going on. One time on, on Twitch, I actually made a, a map of how much all of the Scandinavian countries disliked each other. Found out that apparently nobody likes the Danes. The Swedes, Norwegians, the Finns, they all very much disliked the Danes. What's up with that, Denmark? Let me know in the chat. Why does Denmark deserve the sass from all of the other Scandinavians? Why? Why? The Viking angst. The Viking angst. Well, 2,300 combined so far. It's not too bad, but I think I could have been a little bit more aggressive this game. I'm finishing this battle with a, a few too many hit points. Those HE shells, man. Definitely need to take more HE shells on this tank. I'm going to load a couple gold rounds here at the T20 at long range. I probably... Oh, that was a bad shot. But at least I'm going to get the uh, assistance from the tracking. But from a Mark's perspective, remember, tracking doesn't stack with spotting. And that teeth and the Jagdpanzer IV is gone as well. So there you go. Another 3,200 combined in this tier 6 tank. Wow. It worked. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was the best tier 6 medium in the game. Really showing its worth in this video. I got very nice matchmaking. I got favorable situations. I had a lot of fun. So... That was Uncle Scrubby Baby playing the uh, the best tier 6 medium live for YouTube. Um, and actually for one time having very good results. We averaged uh, 3,600 combined and 4 kills per game in our 3 wins and 4 battles. And my average experience was 2,100. Yeah, I'm not going to pretend like that is my norm. Anyway. Ladies and gents, boys and girls, really hope you enjoyed this uh, video today. And make sure you do support these live videos if you want to see them more. Uh, make sure you either give it a like or a dislike if you didn't like the video. And let me know in the comments uh, if you enjoy this live series and you want me to keep it going. Anyway, that's it for today. Hope you have a lovely rest of your Wednesday. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.